Hello everybody, what's up? This is Rich, and this is a basic demonstration of uh, what to do with uh, VMware so you can try out Linux, Ubuntu Linux in this case, inside Windows XP. When you install VMware Server for the first time, this is the screen you're going to get. Uh, we're not going to a remote host because we're going to host this locally, so we'll set it to local host and hit OK. And then the next thing, uh, oh, we have an update. Well, we'll do that later. That's okay. We don't need to do an update right now. If you download it, you'll get the latest update, though. So anyway, what we're going to do is create a new virtual machine. And it's going to come up with a wizard. And we hit Next. And we're going to do a typical. Uh, we select Linux over here. One of the choices available is Ubuntu. So it's actually very easy. And we hit Next. And the virtual machine name will be named Ubuntu. Simple enough. It will put it in the default location C drive virtual machines Ubuntu subfolder and click next and then uh, bridge networking means that the uh, the guest operating system will share your existing connection what that means is that the OS will have internet access just like uh, you already do so you don't have to configure anything which is good there are other options here for advanced connections but for most of us bridged networking will do just fine and we hit next the default size that it asks for for your virtual disk is 8 gigabyte and you would want to allocate all disk space now by having this box checked you can split it into 2 gig files if you want to I don't recommend that you don't really have to do it so we'll just do finish it's gonna create that 8 gigabyte virtual hard disk which is actually a file and then I'll show you what to do next <clears throat> okay we have our Ubuntu created and left in our inventory we have a single computer you can create multiple computers in this by the way but we have a single one called Ubuntu the state is currently powered off the guest OS is Ubuntu configuration file that's the default one and the version right now it has 256 megs virtual RAM one hard disk the 8 gig thing the CD-ROM it will automatically take that from my existing one the floppy will be using drive A as in the literal drive A of my computer Ethernet is bridged as we did before and is one processor what I'm going to do is edit this machine settings first and remove a couple of things Linux does not require a floppy drive in order to be installed so I'm going to remove that and what I'm going to add to it is I'll click add and you come to the add hardware wizard and I'm going to put in a sound adapter which is a sound card and I will use the default sound card that's already on my computer and hit finish so at least I'll have some sound so now what I have is 256 now I could modify this I just clicked it and I can modify this up to 768 if I want to 256 is fine and uh, for the CD-ROM what you can do is you can use a local drive or you can use an ISO image now I'm going to be using an ISO what you can that is an image of the disk so I've already downloaded the Ubuntu ISO file so I'm gonna go ahead and click that click browse uh, it is on my D drive so I'm gonna go ahead and grab it from there and right here is 610 desktop i386 I'll hit open what happens is when I actually boot this it will launch this ISO file pretty cool huh you don't even need a CD-ROM if you don't want one and then we'll hit OK so now it changed to be using this image you can also do that with floppies by the way you can use floppy images if you so chose to do so don't have to but anyway that's that and then at this point what we're going to do is start the machine and I'll show you what happens when I first start the machine I'm actually going to go into the virtual BIOS just to show you what that's about okay I'm gonna go ahead and start the machine here now before I continue I'll say you after you click inside the window when it boots if you want to release the keyboard you have to press control alt it's important to know that if you don't do that when you want to escape the window so to speak you won't be able to get out of it until you actually power off the, well virtually power off the main machine so let's go I hit the little play button over here to start the machine there it goes it says press F2 to enter setup I do so now 
isn't this neat? We actually have a virtual BIOS. Looks just like a Phoenix BIOS, as you see at the top of the screen. It's Phoenix BIOS setup utility. Looks very familiar to anyone who's in it. I just wanted to show that to you. Let's exit out of this. I'm not going to see. Well, oh, yeah, I'll save. And then it's actually going to boot. And there is Ubuntu. So you use your arrow keys on your keyboard at this point. I'll start Ubuntu. And in a second, I'll show you what it looks like when we get in there. I'll just, uh, actually, before I end this section, I'll just show you part of the boot process. There it goes. Okay, and I'll show you what it looks like in there next. Okay. We're in Ubuntu within XP right now, booted from the ISO image. <laughs> See if you can take that all in a single sitting. Now, this is a for real Ubuntu. It's not installed yet. It's basically acting as if it booted from a CD, and there's an install link right here. So I'll go ahead and double click that. Okay, here we have the install process. Uh, those who have installed the OS before, this is what it looks like. I'm going to click forward, wait for the next screen. Over here I select my time zone, so I'll go ahead and select this one. And click forward. The uh, default keyboard layout is US English, so I'll go ahead and click forward. and then it'll ask me to put in my name and I'll go ahead and do that and click forward it'll ask me to select the disk now this may freak out some people at this point this is not touching anything other than the virtual hard disk so the option where it says to erase the whole thing that's okay. We'll click forward. It will just automatically do the partition. It will erase it and get it set up for Ubuntu. And now at this point it's ready to install and I'll go ahead and hit install. And right now it's installing the whole thing and then in the next section here I'll show you what happens on the reboot. Okay, I finished installing the OS. I rebooted and then I pressed the little stop button up here to stop the operating, excuse me, stop the computer and power it off. The reason I do that is because I have to unmount that CD image. So I'm going to click Edit Virtual Machine Settings, go to the CD ROM, and use Physical Drive instead, which I don't have a disk in there. And then I'm going to click OK and now I'm going to restart the machine and we'll see what happens first it goes through its BIOS check on the post and then it starts and there it goes Okay, now I'm going to put in my username and my password. And here we go. Okay, now I'm going to show you what the shutdown process looks like. Uh, you can do this in several ways in Ubuntu. You can go to System and then Quit, or you can just hit the uh, Power button, uh, what looks like a Power button, way over here on the right side. Remember, when you're in a virtual session, <coughs> excuse me, this is still acting like a real computer, so you should shut it down like you would a real computer. And then we will choose to shut down.
and that's it the machine is now off you can tell by the red button at the top and that's how you do it